Thank you. In this paper, I will discuss rituals related to settlement expansion and the transformation of the landscape during the Late Bronze Age and Pre-Roman Iron Age in southwest Norway. Um, the focus will be on a recently excavated stone cairn located at Sönme near Stavanger. There are no indications of the cairn being a grave, but it was still a complex construction and contain a, a, a variety of objects. The composition of the kern and the different objects can both be associated with transformations. During the Late Bronze Age and the Pre-Roman Iron Age, the coastal region of southwest Norway was an extensive agricultural landscape with numerous farms, fields and grazing areas. Scattered around in the landscape were also several monumental grave mounds and rock carvings with typical Bronze Age motifs, particularly ships. This landscape was the result of a wide range of activities and a distinct increase in settlement, where established farms expanded and new land was cleared to facilitate farming, grazing and the construction of settlement. This transformation process started in the late Neolithic, but accelerated throughout the Bronze Age. And in the beginning of the pre-Roman Iron Age, heathland dominated the landscape along the coast. The stone kern at Sönme had a central location within this cultural landscape, situated between uh, Hafasjur in the northeast and the North Sea in the west. Pollen analysis show that the immediate surroundings were used for pasture in the late Neolithic and throughout most of the Bronze Age. For a short period at the beginning of the pre-Roman Iron Age, parts of the area <coughs> were also cultivated. The nearest contemporary farms were situated on high ground, only 500 meters from the Kern. Prior to the excavation, the kern was sealed by massive layers of turf and aeolian sand, creating very good preservation conditions. The kern had an oval shape uh, and was almost 11 meter, meters long and 4 meters wide. After the removal of the top layer of stones, two adjacent stone settings were uncovered. One of the stone settings took its shape from a small mound made out of clay and silt. This was covered with stones and some of these can be characterized as stone slabs. In the eastern part of the mound, a large rounded stone was placed in an upright position. Between the stones in the center of the mound was a piece of a red deer mandible. And at the edge, we found a collection of seashells, mainly oysters, cockles, and clams. In different part, parts of the stone layer were also two grinding stones and a delicately crafted 20 centimeter long wooden object of unknown function. The other stone setting had a more flat and circular shape and was bounded by two large boulders to the north. At the bottom, there was a stone slab platform, and between the stones in the platform, we found a red deer antler. None of the objects found in the kern can be dated typologically. Radiocarbon dating reveals, however, that the kern was created over a period of at least 200 years. The stone slab platform seems to have been made in the late Bronze Age, while the small mound was added to the construction in the pre-Roman Iron Age. The stones which covered the two stone settings were probably, probably put there at the same time as or shortly after the creation of the mound. The kern at Sommer has several similarities with graves from other parts of Scandinavia dated to the late Bronze Age and pre-Roman Iron Age. Regarding both, the re regarding both the complex construction and several of the objects found in the kern. However, the lack of human remains make the interpretation of the current as a grave difficult. 
The preservation conditions were so good that human bones should have survived regardless whether or not the disease was cremated. Most likely, the, the kern functioned as a sacred place, perhaps an altar, which was constructed over time through repeated rituals. Throughout the settlement expansion, especially during the Late Bronze Age and the Pre-Roman Iron Age, former forest and outfield areas were rapidly transformed into farms, fields and racing areas. The landscape during this period is often referred to as floating or fluctuating since households had to re-establish the farm and rebuild the house every generation. This system can be seen within many settlement areas in southwest Norway where generations of late Bronze Age and pre-Roman Iron Age houses have been recorded. Several of the objects found in the kern at Sönmar can also be related to different transformations. For instance, through grinding, seeds and grains are transformed from their natural state to a cultural product. Grinding stones are frequently found in ritual contexts in houses and at settlement sites, and they are usually associated with fertility and reproduction. Grinding stones also occur in graves, where they are related to the transformation of the dead and the decomposition of the body. Seashells can have a similar meaning when found in graves, since they may represent the sea and the disease transformation and regeneration through water. The red deer can also be a symbol of trans transformation. This animal has its natural habitat in the forest, but it also thrives in an open landscape, and to a certain point, both agriculture and grazing may improve feeding opportunities for red deer. Since the red deer can appear in different landscapes, the animal could have operated as a mediator who transcended the boundaries between the domestic landscape and the wild. During this, its 200 years of use, the Kernet Sommer went through several changes and transformations. And this might reflect some sort of a narrative. It is difficult to read this narrative, but it seems that the red deer was significant, since the animal is present in both the oldest and the youngest face of the kernel. In both faces, the head, which is the most characteristic and vital feature of the animal, has been the focus of the rituals. Stone slabs are also common, a common feature within the kernel. In Bronze Age graves, such stones were used to create rooms and boundaries, which again were important elements in the transformation of the dead. Similar <coughs> ideas could also apply to the kern at summer, and both the chronological and compositional differences within the kern may reflect a beginning and an end in a narrative. The youngest element of the kern, the stones that cover the two stone settings, seems to be the final stage in a course of events, and most likely the covering marks an end to the rituals. Many of the objects found in the Kern at Sommer have an intrinsic duality. The red there crosses barriers between different landscapes, the seashells have their habitat in the intertidal zone, and the grinding stones transform grains and seeds into food. A similar duality can be found in the Bronze Age and pre-Roman uh, Iron Age landscape. The kern was created in, a culture, in the cultural landscape where people lived and performed their daily work. However, this was not a unified landscape and it was in constant transformation through clearance and settlement expansion. A consequence of these actions could be that the balance between gods and humans was put in danger and to prevent chaos, the people performed rituals and offerings in the transformed landscape. By using objects with an innate duality, as we can see at Sommer, it became easier to restore the imbalance. And since the transformation of the landscape was a continuous process, the rituals had to be repeated several times. In the middle of the pre-Roman Iron Age, the rituals at Sommer ended. We don't know uh, why, but the rituals could have become redundant, changed form, or been moved to another place.
However, it is also possible that the people were forced to give up due to nature transforming the landscape. Shortly after the stone layer was placed on top of the two stone settings, a thick layer of Aeolian sand covered the area. The sand drift was quite substantial, and as a consequence, the nearest farm were, was abandoned. This part of, part of southwest Norway is, a very, is very exposed to Aeolian activity because of the topography and the presence of several nearby beaches. However, the main reason for the sand drift in the pre-Roman Iron Age was human impact on the landscape and the vegetation. The combination of settlement expansion, significant deforestation, and increased grazing throughout the Bronze Age destroyed natural vegetation barriers and caused heavily erosion of the soil, which in turn facilitated the sand drift. Today, it's a bit ironic to see that despite the of repeated offerings to keep a balance in the transformed landscape, chaos and destruction have become predominant because of human influence on the landscape. Thank you. <laughs>